Here we go again. How you doing everyone? Turkey Buzzard here. Hope you're having a good day. Anyone who keeps tabs on my channel and my videos is probably aware that I've been putting out Red Dead Redemption 2 videos for the past couple of months. Well today is no different because I have built from Red Dead Redemption 2 the town of Valentine. Now rather than touring the town as Arthur Morgan who is the main character, I've decided to use one of the other guys from the gang, a man named Charles Smith, and according to Charles, he is a fellow with a black father and an Indian mother. Of all of the members of the gang, Charles is probably one of my favorites because he's a quiet guy, uh, very fair, nice guy, easy to get along with, and he helps Arthur out a lot during the game. So anyways, let's talk about the town of Valentine. Valentine is, as the sheriff says, a cow town. And really it's kind of a mud hole down through the middle of town. Uh, in the game, it seems like a small town. But let me tell you something. After building this, I no longer consider Valentine to be a small town. First we'll check out the railroad station which also takes care of mail deliveries. Now I know I've said this before time and again but I'm gonna say it one more time. <laughs> this is the largest build I've ever done. Now I used Spectacle Island for this build and not only did I build everything that you see including the ground I'm walking on, I also had to expand the island to make it large enough to cover the entire build. This build is so large that near the end of the build I actually crashed twice and when I say crashed I don't mean the game crashed I mean my entire computer crashed. I had to reboot my computer twice that's how large this build is. Take a look at this Billy the Kid poster he has a $500 reward on his head. I would think he would be one of the worst outlaws in the game, however, he apparently is not. Uh, later on I'll show you a poster of a lady who is wanted and they're offering $750 for her. So this is where you can come to buy a ticket for the, for the train. Uh, you can also pick up your mail, send letters, and if you're wanted you can also pay off your bounty here so that the law stops looking for you. Now out these back doors is an area where they can stack freight which will be loaded onto the train and also there's an area down here where there's a vendor. I don't, I've never bought anything off him but he's here. I don't know what he sells. But it's also the area where if it's here you can catch the stagecoach rather than riding the train. Now I'm sorry to say that there are not any NPCs in this build. Uh, the build ended up so large that I don't dare to bring any people in here. Besides, they don't behave anyway, so I, I'd rather use the uh, armor racks and mannequins and whatever. Now although this is a cow town, um, this place has a lot of sheep and goats and stuff. So in the USO there's a museum section which has what they call cow statues. To me they look more like sheep so I put a bunch of those in there. And over on this side I did actually put some animals in here. And of course they have some ramps for loading the livestock onto the trains. Now while we go over and check out the auction yard here, I want to talk about lag. If you're a regular viewer of my videos, you know that my larger builds uh, routinely have a lot of lag in them. Well, this past week, thanks to Scott from over at Sbrew42, uh, he told me of a better way to record my videos and I tried it out and guess what? No lag. So I really want to thank Scott for helping me solve a problem that's been plaguing me for months. 
Anyone who hasn't already should stop by and check out Scott's channel and check out some of his builds. Uh, it's sbrew42. I will put a link in the description to his channel. But uh, he does some really nice builds, mostly lore friendly stuff. And he and I collaborate on a lot of builds. We'll, we'll discuss what we want to build ahead of time and talk about what to put in the builds and stuff. So a lot of our builds that you see are, are the result of both of us uh, discussing the builds on how to put them together and whatnot. So if you get a chance, stop by and check out his channel. Anyways, this is the auction yard and of course this is a blacksmith area. You've probably noticed that the animals don't behave any better than the people do. All these uh, corrals that I have here, and do you think I can keep the animals inside the pens? Not a chance. Anyway, the town of Valentine is situated between a bunch of hills. So it's mostly surrounded by hills and mountains, especially uh, on the east side. There's a lot of uh, really tall mountains up in there, which is where... You start the game if you do play Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, believe it or not, the reason that I did this build is not because I've been playing Red Dead Redemption 2. It's because I came across a new mod uh, called Nuka World Shopper's Paradise, which has tons of western theme materials in there. And of course, the minute I downloaded the mod and saw all those materials, I said, that's it. I got to build a western town again. And since I've been playing Red Dead Redemption 2, I figured what town better to build than the town of Valentine. Now, this auction yard and these backyard areas behind the buildings are not really areas that you have a reason to travel much during the game, but they're there, so naturally I had to build them. And we're taking a roundabout way to end up at what I consider to be the north road uh, on the north side of town. On this north road is a small saloon, and in this saloon you can pick up a, an extra side mission to do, but also the saloon here out just outside is the starting point of a shootout which ends up driving our gang out of town and they end up having to move to a different area of the map. Now as I said in the beginning of this video I've been putting out Red Dead Redemption 2 videos for a couple of months now and the videos typically only get about four or five views for each video. And uh, a lot of people probably are wondering, well, why, why do I bother keep putting out these videos if they're not getting the views? I'll tell you why. It's because I love Red Dead Redemption 2. It has one of the largest open world maps of any of the games that are currently being played. And the scenery on those maps are beautiful. Also, unlike Fallout 4, there's no loading screens or anything. When you go to a big town and walk into places and go do things, there's never a loading screen. It's all happening as you go. And as far as storyline goes, uh, it's exciting. And at times, it's really sad. Uh, I'm not a sad or sappy type person, and I don't get emotional easy or anything like that but I'll tell you what Red Dead Redemption 2 is a very sad story okay I'll be quiet and climb down off my soapbox um, this is what I consider to be the south road going into town and once you get past all these barns and whatever that are part of the uh, auction yard the first thing you see is a gallows in the game, the first time you come into this town, you actually do watch a hanging here. And as I swing around quickly, trying not to let you notice the Pridwin in the background there, <laughs> we see a small tent village that is erected just outside of town. It 
So when you come down the south road of town, uh, entering into town, the first thing you come across is the livery stable. And this livery stable is where you come in the game to upgrade your saddle and other accessories. And you can also board your horses, uh, you can buy horses, you can also change the appearance of your horse. And that's all done here at the stable, just at the end of Main Street. It doesn't really hurt my feelings that we have no NPCs because, hey, we don't have any horses either. Someone once asked Bethesda why there aren't any horses in this game, and their reply was, oh, they didn't uh, survive the Holocaust. I don't really buy that as a good reason. I consider it probably as an excuse for one of Bethesda's many oversights. I mean, if their excuse is supposed to be believable, then how come there are dogs in this game? Because I'll tell you what, dogs are one of the first animals that would die off because they eat just about anything they come across that's laying there dead. Also, pigs are one of the most resilient animals that you'll ever find, but you won't find them in this game. However, once everything is said and done, I still love this game. And it's a lot of fun to build, so, you know, I just continue building. Anyway, as you start up Main Street, you notice on the left that there's a house that's being built. Uh, I don't know what they're building there. They don't have any signs or anything like that. But they are erecting some, some type of a building here. And across the street here is the Saints Hotel. Another reason this build ended up so big is because in Red Dead Redemption 2 you end up going in most of these buildings uh, in town. And so I wanted to actually build the interiors of them and decorate them so that everyone could see what the town of Valentine actually looks like in Red Dead Redemption 2. Back here is a bath area, and if you decide you want to be clean during the game, you end up having to come here and take a bath. You also have a reason to come up here in one of these rooms and beat up some guy who is slapping around one of the girls from your gang. A back balcony, which you have no reason to be out here on, but it's there, so I build it. And of course there's a front balcony here where you can actually walk out and look over town. This build ended up so big that my controls are actually kind of spongy. I don't know, it's, it's like my character is weaving back and forth or something. This alley here is where one of the gang's girls has some problems with a guy, which you end up having to straighten out. And over across the street here is the general store. Now the general store is pretty cool because this is where you get all your food, your clothing, uh, medicines, horse liniments, things like that. So you can come in here and either walk around and get all your stuff off the shelves or you can shop straight out of the catalog which is much quicker and easier. Now over across the street here is the bank, and the entire time that you are camped outside of town here, 
you never get to go inside this bank. However, later in the game when you move on, you and a couple of your other gang members come back here and actually rob this bank. You force one of the tellers to open this door, and once the teller opens the door, you force this other guy to open this other door. Then while a couple of your partners keep watch out on the street, you end up going in here and opening these safes and robbing the bank. Now it's time to hit the main saloon in town. And the name of this saloon is Smithfields. And there's a couple times that you have inside this saloon. One time you come in here and you get in a fight with some guy and he throws you through the front windows. Another time you bring this young kid from the gang. He's not really a kid, he's just a young guy and you bring him in here and you and him both get drunker than a skunk and you end up getting into all kinds of trouble and waking up in the morning in a jail cell. So uh, there's a couple times that you have in this saloon. Plus this saloon has the barber in here. I don't know why he's in the saloon, but that's the way it is in Valentine. Your character does end up going upstairs because uh, when you and the young guy here and you're drunk, you end up wandering all over the place. Uh, there's times that your character pretty much loses consciousness because he's so drunk. And like I said, you wake up in the morning in a jail cell, but uh, it's, it's pretty comical. Useless. Well, I forgot that that door is locked. It only goes out to a balcony anyways. So that's pretty much it for the saloon. Now across the street is a law office, which you never end up going inside, so I didn't bother decorating that. And the same way, uh, there's a building here. I don't know what it is. You never go in it, so I didn't bother decorating that. There's also a doctor's office, which uh, the only reason you end up going in there, if you do, is there's a kind of a side mission where you can go in and rob them. Um, but I didn't bother doing that. And of course, you see the church there. And this is the sheriff's office. Now there's a poster in here for a lady named Bell Star, $750, apparently a lot worse outlaw than Billy the Kid. Now you do get to do some bounty hunting during the game. Uh, if you come across bounty posters, you can go collect on them. So that's the sheriff's office, and now across the street is what I consider to be just about the most important building in the game, the gunsmith. The most important things you own in Red Dead Redemption 2 are your horse and your guns, and you take care of both equally well. This is where you come to buy your ammo, you can buy new weapons, you can upgrade your weapons, you can buy uh, your cleaning equipment and things like that. And again, it's easiest just to shop right straight out of the catalog. So that's the gun shop, and that's pretty much it for the town of Valentine. And I will say it once again, this is the largest build I've ever done. I had to expand the island, and everything that's here I put here, the ground I'm walking on, the grass, the 
few trees that are here, all the buildings, everything that's here I had to put here. And uh, it was a month straight of heavy building in order to complete this build. So uh, I had a lot of fun doing it and hopefully you all enjoyed watching it. If you did, please hit that like button. It helps me out a lot and I appreciate it when you do. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please do. I put out new videos all the time. Be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. But I want to thank everyone for watching, and I'll see you again real soon.